Hello friends, welcome back. In this module, we'll cover the file transfer activity within Automation Studio. As you can see, this is our Automation Studio, uh, you know, the main page when you come in, the overview. And you'll find all the activities that we usually commonly configure within Automation Studio and under the Activities tab. So you'll see like Send Email, Import File, File Transfer, Data Extract, SQL Query, Filter, and Script Activities. Now, uh, sometimes you don't see a data extract and script in your org. Uh, you probably have to like raise a support case for them to enable that for you, okay? Uh, but the default, you should be able to find import file, uh, file transfer, and SQL query or filter as well, right? Now, uh, under file transfer, um, like you can actually go ahead and then when you click on that, you can actually define, you know, and then you can create uh, each activity that you can then reuse in your, in your automation workflow. Before I actually go in and start configuring it, I just want to show you the overall workflow of like what file transfer activity is about. Uh, so let me just show you that over the PPT. So imagine like, you know, uh, uh, and, and for file transfer, there's actually two ways it, it works. There's inbound and outbound. So in the first video, I will actually go through the inbound flow. Uh, so as you can see, there's marketing cloud uh, and it has data uh, that it houses for the various uh, uh, customer data and its relational data that it wants to use for marketing purposes, right? And we have the enhanced FTP that's provided uh, along with Marketing Cloud, and then there is something called Safehouse. Now, uh, Safehouse is primarily a secure location that is actually provided within Marketing Cloud. You, we don't have direct access to it, and we cannot view like you know what are the file contents on there. But it's kind of like a temporary storage space that is actually housed within Marketing Cloud and is used for like temporary processing uh, as an intermediary between the FTP and Marketing Cloud, right? So in in uh, the inbound part of file transfer activity, we usually have like you know files actually being uh, you know uploaded by external systems or like some processes that actually send that across to our enhanced FTP. Right. So uh, example, for example, you have a file uh, which is already like compressed and then it's also encrypted like there's PGP or GPG encryption. So let's say it's, it's encrypted. So usually when we keep it on the FTP folders, we want to make sure the files are secure. Right. You still can put them as like a CSV file. It still works. But uh, most of the time, like if you have like uh, secure customer data, we prefer it to be like either compressed or like in it's, it's in a, a secure format, it's encrypted. Okay. So once that uh, the file is actually placed in the enhanced FTP, we need to like bring that into Marketing Cloud. So one of the ways that we do it is, is using the file transfer activity. And there is an option called manage file within file transfer, and that's the inbound one, right? So what it does is you have the option to go ahead and tell it like, okay, there is a file, uh, which is such and such uh, naming convention there. And then if it's a, it's a compressed file or if it's an encrypted file or both, uh, go ahead and you know, you know, uncompress it and then decrypt it. And so when it's actually uh, uncompressing and decrypting it, it actually brings it over to the safe house, right? And and because the safe house is internal to uh, Marketing Cloud, it's not accessible externally to you know external systems or uh, it's it's more secure. So this is the workflow that's that is defined by Marketing Cloud. And then from the safe house, we have uh, other activities where you can actually bring the the file over into. Marketing Cloud, which we will actually like look at in a, in a future video, right? It's the import file activity, which we can actually bring in and then you can update the data extension. In this module, we will we'll primarily cover the file transfer activity and in this video, we'll see how this manage file configuration works. But this is just to give you an over overview of like, you know, how that actually that inbound flow looks like when you want to bring in a file into Marketing Cloud from an external system, okay? So let's go back to our uh, Automation Studio uh, page here. And as you can see, like, you know, under file transfer, I can go ahead and create a new activity. And under the, there's like seven activities that I can choose from. So today we'll look at file transfer. It primarily says like you want to like, you know, whenever you want to upload a file or download a file from a transfer location, uh, you you have to use this particular one. So as you saw from the flow, the file transfer activity is it does not update data into Marketing Cloud. It's primarily like in a use for file transfers. Unlike you know some of the other ones where you actually like would be working with the data extensions in Marketing Cloud, right? So I'll click on here next, and we'll start with the configuration of the new new file transfer activity here. So you have to give a name, right? You know for this particular one. So I'll just say probably say like you know uh, transfer customer data from FTP. Okay. So assuming like you know we have a customer file that's out on FTP. And we want to like bring that in into Marketing Cloud, right? So I'll use the inbound flow, which is manage file. As you can see here, there's a second option here. That's primarily for outbound, which we will actually look at in the next video. 
So for, for this example, we will look at uh, the inbound flow and we have to select the manage file option here. Okay, go ahead and click next. This is the page where we have to like, you know, give all the primary configurations for how this file transfer is gonna work. So there is a file naming pattern. Like, you know, you have to specify, okay, what's the file name like when you wanna like, you know, bring that in. Um, so here you can actually give the name of the file. Like if it's a if it's a direct file without any uh, wildcard specifiers, like you see there, the, the year, the month, or the day, you can go ahead and just just put the file name. For example, if it's customer dot zip dot pgp, uh, you can go ahead and specify it as is. But uh, let's say if it was having like you know the month uh, or the year and the day, so you can probably have to like you know put that in. You have to qualify the year sorry got a typo there okay and you can actually put the next one the month you can close Open and day so that's what it will look like you know if it's a year month and day uh, you want that appended to the customer uh, file name. Uh, if there's an underscore, you can put an underscore. If it's a hyphen, you can use a hyphen. And then you can you can have to specify like you know what type of uh, extension would it be like you know. Uh, so it actually looks for exactly that that particular uh, file name. Now, if there's no uh, specific qualifiers, you can you can just leave that out. Uh, keep in mind that there is uh, there's additional ones like you know the hours, the minute, and second as well. Uh, when you are actually trying to uh, use qualifiers, pre make sure like you know if it's a large file, try not to use like the minutes and the second one because like you know when large files get processing, uh, you probably will not get a f uh, same match and it's like the time is already passed and uh, you probably will get a file not found error. So if you're using like, you know, uh, if you have to use a date, uh, it's still fine. You can use the year, month, day, uh, probably hour if you think it's gonna get processed pretty fast uh, as soon as the file comes in. But if it's gonna be a schedule and it's gonna be a later time in, uh, during the day, then I prefer it to be like just a year, month, and day if you wanna like, you know, have, have it like done on a daily basis, right? Uh, but if not, like, you know, uh, yeah, just go ahead and you can just leave it without the qualifiers. Uh, another way to do this, there's actually something uh, that I'll, I'll leave a link in this uh, after the video, like, you know, for you to like go and look at specific qualifiers that you can actually use. Uh, for example, there is something called file name from trigger. Okay, uh, let me put that here so you can see it. <laughs> So this basically will you don't you don't have to specify the exact name. Um, so if you're using this with a file uh, like triggered automation or a file drop, right? So as soon as that triggers, it actually and you're going to use this file uh, transfer activity just after that file drop automation uh, kicks off. Then when you specify this, it'll automatically take the the file name from that trigger, right? You don't have to go ahead and specify the exact name what it looks like, like you know. So that's an easy way to like you know do this as well. Um, there's actually a couple of other cases as well where you can actually use trigger underscore base or base file name from trigger. So I'll leave you the link uh, so that you can see the various examples of how to use that with with the particular uh, file names and, and the extensions on how to like use that when you name the file, right? So uh, I'll leave it here for, for this example. I'll just leave it as is. And then you have to specify which folder are you expecting the file to get dropped into and where it should it get transferred from, okay? So in this case, we will just use the import folder. Like, so I'm expecting it to like, you know, come into the import folder in the FTP. And then uh, if I'm expecting it to be a, a, a zipped file, then I have to like uh, specify it as unzip the compressed file. And if it's like an encrypted one, I have to like specify uh, decrypt. Uh, both of these are optional. Like, you know, if it is actually, uh, you would choose it only like, you know, if it's zipped or encrypted. And most of the times we would recommend that files being sent in or at least encrypted so that, you know, it's secure on the external FTP, right? There's all additional options that you can specify, like, you know, for instance, like, you know, if you're actually uh, expecting, like, you know, multiple files, like, you know, and, and, and you're, uh, you don't want, like, you know, uh, process files uh, within a specific time period, like, you know, if you're expecting, like, you know, files should always be, like, processed during you know, once in six hours, so then if something, like, you know, you, you get a file by mistake, like, you know, within that six hour period, like, you know, you shouldn't be processing it again. So you can always go ahead and, and then specify, like, you know, click here and then specify, like, okay, do not skip, sorry, do not uh, process the file if it's uh, not older than, like, you know, six hours or so. 
um, and like you know if it's if you uh, have probably sometimes a scheduled automation right and then you want to like you know uh, you're probably calling it not at the time when the file is being dropped but like you know you've, you're probably calling it at every uh, particular time in a day like maybe 7 a.m. in the morning you want you want to run this file transfer activity so what if like a file did not come in like or they have an old file uh, that actually got dropped into the FTP so we don't want uh, an old file to be processed, right? Or even in a file drop as well, if it's an olden file that's actually being dropped in uh, by the external FTP process, and we will actually ch check the date um, of that particular file. And if it's older than X number of hours, then we wouldn't want to process it as well. Sometimes, like, you know, when you're doing, like, you know, uh, the file transfer and you want to wait a certain time before it's actually getting processed, uh, for instance, if, especially when you have a file drop automation, like, you know, as soon as it kicks off, let's say if you're expecting the file to be a little big in size and if it's not fully transferred, then you want to maybe use a buffer. Like, you know, you can go ahead and say, okay, just wait an hour before the f uh, file is, like, fully loaded, and then we can start the file transfer activity. Or if you want to adjust it with the time zone settings, like, you know, if you want to, you know, wait for a certain certain amount of time after a file drop has happened and then go ahead and do something uh, the the next activity then you can still still go ahead and, and specify the buffer hours as well okay in this example we'll just leave it by default we'll just leave all of those blank uh, once you click on next then you will see like okay it just gives you the summary uh, it tells you basically like you know, you're using the inbound option what is the name uh, what is the file naming convention that you're using and what's the f uh, source location and if you're asking it to like you know unzip or decrypt the file so once you finish, it actually saves that activity uh, in, in, in the um, uh, panel here behind. So let me go back. So you will see like like these ones will actually get saved. And then you can actually use that in, in one of your automations. So uh, let's say like I have this one here, like decrypt and unzip products, right? So I can go ahead into an automation. Uh, I can just click on a new automation. Uh, let's say I want to do it when a file drops, right? So I can go ahead and then if I take file transfer, uh, you'll see like it's grayed out, but once I want to like and I choose I can go here and then I can click on this one It will actually show you all the ones that I had actually saved, right? So the decrypt dungeon products it actually says okay, it's an inbound uh, It's expecting this file name like products.zip.pgp which is encrypted and zipped and it's, it's in the import folder, right? So it will actually unzip and decrypt it and then transfer that over so when I actually save this one and I try to run it actually as soon as a file uh, named products dot um, zip dot pgp is, is uh, configured and then we expect it to like you know trigger this file drop uh, then it'll actually kick off this file transfer um, activity right so th there is some examples that I will actually go through in a future video on some of these uh, examples like you know we will look at it you know when a file drop is actually done uh, we use the file transfer and then the import activity to like you know bring the data into data extensions for now this is just to give you an idea of like you know how you would actually configure the inbound uh, file transfer activity and then how you do you add that into uh, an automation workflow okay so uh, that's it for this particular video. Uh, do hang around, like you know, I will actually go through the outbound process in the next video, and then later I'll also look at like you know how do you actually do encryption uh, in um, in Automation Studio to be used along with you know file transfer activity. Thank you for watching.